a spinal surgeon divorces his beauty queen wife because she led a secret life as a high-end hooker earning seven hundred thousand dollars so i'm just going to rip through this real quick and then um we'll go back to the uh, full screen and and jonathan will chop it a little chop it up a little bit from his perspective uh but this spinal surgeon dr han joe kim settled his divorce from a former beauty beauty queen named regina turner uh, court documents reviewed by new york daily news a surgeon reportedly discovered the ex miss connecticut had been engaging in sex work uh this allegedly happened during uh, sorry before and during their marriage which began in 2015. Uh, he claims Turner received cash payments from men totaling $675,030 in cash deposits from 2015 to 2021. So that was that was a little over $100,000 a year she made hooking, I guess, um, according to reports in court documents. Dr. Kim reportedly seeking to void the marriage on the basis of fraud. Uh, this is her looking all snacky on stage during her Miss Connecticut appearance. I guess I think this is 2011 she won this uh, title. It's a beauty pageant. And here she is doing, you know, the you know the good old pose with the kid's bicycle, putting train wheels on, saving, you know, saving the West, Miss Connecticut. <laughs> and here's Dr. Kim, uh, the spinal surgeon who was making $3 million a year in 2018, according to uh, this article, um, you know what? I know that, uh, Jonathan dove into it quite deep. Um, there's a lot to unpack with this and this doesn't always make the media. So rather than read the article and bore you with what, uh, the media has put together, why don't we give the floor to our good friend, Jonathan Noble, the lawyer, uh, who's going to shed a little bit of light on this from the legal perspective, from the legal mind. Yeah. Thank you, Rich. Uh, First of all, as you start to look at the facts as they're presented to us, and we don't know everything because we weren't part of this uh, marriage or relationship, but he's 41, she's 32, so he's about nine years uh, her senior. And in order to become a surgeon, you may or may not know, it takes many, many years. It's you know college, then medical school, then internship, residency, probably did a subspecialty in spinal surgery. So... He could have been in his mid thirties, you know, when he was uh, no longer in school and uh, looking to get married. And along comes a very pretty woman who must have cast a spell over him for lack of a better term. Uh, and they, they married and he gave her a great life. But what he obviously didn't know was her secret life where she was earning substantial amount of money sleeping with other guys or entertaining other guys' desires, however you want to frame it. Uh, so now if you really think about it, guys got to be pretty smart, at least book smart to get all those credentials and to be a spine surgeon. Uh, I think that the process to be, to get into a surgical residency, is like a pyramid. It's very difficult. Uh, there are other specialties that are much easier, but surgery is hard and spine surgery must be extremely difficult. So he's extremely book smart. But even the smartest guy can get captivated if he has one-itis or he has uh, blinders on or he's just not watching out what's going on. So this is a tale. It's like a learning uh, moment, a teaching moment where even someone like that who should have all of his wits about him is married to someone, uh, you know, that bond under state law. And he didn't know for five years. Now, I think there was one picture that you may have shown that was taken in 2011. So uh, they got married in December of 20, uh, 2015. 2015, yeah. Right. And then he found out about this in December of 2020. And that's um, those are important dates. Uh, so based on what I've been able to discern uh, about the procedure in this case, he filed for an annulment. Uh, versus divorce. What is that? Uh, what is that versus a divorce? So they know. Okay. So an annulment basically voids the marriage. And in most jurisdictions, there's void marriages, which mean as a matter of law, the marriage is, is non-existent. What, what would create a void marriage? Well, if you marry someone who isn't yet divorced from their former spouse, and they didn't tell you that because they couldn't find their former spouse, that's one uh, scenario that could create a void marriage. 
or if the pe if you're 16 years old and you marry another 16 year old uh, and then you turn 18, your age of majority, and then you can go to the court and say, I want to annul this because I didn't know what I was doing. Uh, that could void a marriage. Um, there's another quirky area of the law where you're not enough degrees of consanguinity is uh, the term where the blood relationship between you and the person that you married isn't long enough. Like you marry your first cousin or something that would void a marriage. So there's all these quirky ways that you can get out of it. But then there's voidable marriages uh, whereby you marry someone based on duress or fraud, which I'm sure he alleged in this. And if you can prove that you were lied to, to the degree that he was, there's a good chance you could have your marriage voided uh, or annulled. Did you ever hear this story, Jonathan? Sorry to interrupt, but there was one that I was thinking of as you were talking about these annulments with a Chinese man that sued his wife for being ugly because she misrepresented her appearance to him and they ended up having what he called ugly children, apparently. Did you ever hear this story? No. Wow. And did he win? I mean, uh, you could people sue for the craziest reasons. I wonder so what here wins says wins 120,000. I mean, like you'd have to dig through some of the records on this one to make sure that it's confirmed. But this was a story that, that popped out a few years ago. It was around, well, here it is. It's uh, 2012. Wow. I don't know where that's located, but I'd love to read the statute that he sued under, yeah. you know, to try to get relief because you married someone ugly. Like, ha didn't he see her walking out of the shower? Didn't he <laughs> see her when... This I is mean, like after the plastic surgery, like she had her entire face reconstructed completely. <laughs> and then they had children together and he wasn't pleased with the results. So he found out she had plastic surgery and <laughs> tried to sue her for it. You know what? I'd be shaking my head if I were the judge on that one. But uh, one, one point I want to make on this other case with the surgeon. Uh, if you're a victim of uh, fraud or duress, you have to take action immediately. You can't continue to cohabitate with this person and then ask the court to annul your marriage. So it seems to me like he saw some texts that were really raunchy on her phone mm -hmm. in December of 2020, then filed to annul. Is there uh, a limitation period on those sorts of actions when it comes to annulling a marriage? Because my understanding was like, you know, you can annul it if you were drunk, you went to Vegas, you got married and you're like, oh, that was a bad idea. And four right. weeks later that you can annul it. But is there like a limitation period that says that you can't do anything after two years, five years or anything like that? You'd have to read the statute in each jurisdiction. Like every state, every province has their own uh, marriage and divorce statutes. Uh, I'm just looking quickly here. Uh, you don't want to let too much time lapse, uh, especially if it's a claim of fraud or duress. Uh, the way the statute reads, at least in Pennsylvania, uh, there has been no subsequent voluntary cohabitation after knowledge of the fraud or release of the fraud, duress, or coercion. Uh, so you're not going to be able to plead that this person lied to me. So he took action right away. I'm assuming that the New York statute's similar, where you just can't keep continually cohabitate and then just one day wake up and say, you know, you lied to me. Um, and if you look at the totality of the circumstances, in his case, she lied to him about where this money was coming from. She was building an app. Uh, that in and of itself may not have tipped the scales in his favor. Mm -hmm. She lied about her education. Mm, mm -hmm. I don't know, man. That would she have never been graduated close. high school. Right. She said she had three years of college, but he wasn't marrying her because of her college degree or lack thereof. <laughs> she was very pretty. I mean, there's no way around it. Um, so he took action right away and that's how you protect your rights, whether it's child custody or, or duress or, or, you know, fraudulent marriage. But what does that do? If he got an annulment, it gave his attorney great leverage. Why? Because if your marriage is annulled, you don't have to go through the divorce machine. So he's able to settle everything. He, oh, so you don't deal with child support, alimony. Well, it's no, no, it's child as support. if the marriage never happened. Right. Support exactly. would if you had kids, but alimony, it's like you're not married, so we didn't have to deal with that. Right. Clever. Okay, right. Gotcha. So that's a great strategy to say, look, if you want, we'll go forward with this. He had a humongous uh, case against her built. Did they uh, have children? Not to my knowledge. Okay. Yeah, so I didn't he, see anything in that article. Yeah. He doesn't have anything to do with her now. If there's no connection, there's no children. Yeah. And I think the articles would have said there was a child involved. Yeah. So. 
just a word to the wise. Uh, if you marry someone, don't sit on your hands if you think that there's some reason why you could, the marriage could be voided or annulled. Uh, you want to take action because you're not going to get sympathy from the courts if you wait too long. Mm.